I've done a lot of builds on Baldur's Gate 3 on this channel, but what are my top five favorite builds to actually use when I play? In this video, I'm gonna go through that, my top five builds uh, to actually use. Now, to be clear here, these are my favorite builds. I had a lot of comments in my tier list video uh, acting like I was doing some kind of pure empirical measurements um, to find out which build is best, which is when it was really just my opinion. Uh, and it's always important to remember uh, that this there's not a single truth to the best build in a game like this. It's What constitutes best is a matter of personal taste, and it's ultimately a game, uh, so just have fun. So no particular order, let's get started. First of all, the build that I made my very first video on here, Paladin 5, Warlock 7, or Paladin 6, Warlock 6, depending on taste. In that video, I advised going 5-5 in those classes and then taking two levels in Fighter, uh, but the game had just came out and uh, I was wrong, so get over it. The great thing about this build is there's actually a lot of room uh, to make your own choices. Uh, you can pick whatever Paladin subclass you want, You can, the same goes for the Warlock subclass as well. The important thing, uh, the important synergy with this class is picking Pact of the Blade when you get to Warlock level 3. The extra attack that you get at, level, at Warlock level 5 uh, stacks with the extra attack that you get from Paladin 5. Um, I recommend going Paladin for the first 5 levels and then moving over to get the last 7 in Warlock unless you go 6-6 six, six, and then do Paladin to 5 and then probably Warlock to... Well, I mean at that point you can just do 6 Paladin and then carry on with Warlock and you're good. You might want to go to 6 Paladin just because you get the aura uh, stuff that you get with uh, with Paladin then, but if you don't care about that and you want more spell slots for smites, go with Warlock 7. Heavy armor, 3 attacks per action, smites, eldritch blasts, plus the invocations, it's charisma based for speech checks, you can kind of do it all. It's with the first video I did uh, a build on, or oh, the first build that I did a video on, for a reason, because it's so good. Next up is the build from one of my uh, most recent videos, the Cleric Bard Ultimate Support build. Though there have been some updates to that video if, you, uh, if you've been paying attention. That build was all around the spell that you get from Law Bard Magical Secrets at level 6, uh, Warden of Vitality. You basically cast it on yourself uh, with an action, and then for the next 10 turns you can use your bonus action to cast a heal. I tested if the extra bonus action that you get with Thief, um, the rogue subclass Thief at level 3, means you can do it twice. And crazily enough it does. So now my build goes like this. First off, you can take the first level in Cleric if you like, then Bard 6 for a total of 7 levels, then the 3 rogue levels to get to Thief, uh, and then finish the build off with more Bard levels. The one level in Cleric is not really too necessary. Uh, I pick it because I like the heavy armor proficiency, uh, and I usually put this build on Shadowheart, and it feels correct to at least give her one level of Cleric. Plus the one level in Life Cleric uh, gives you the Disciple of Life feature, which they fixed as of the recent patch number 4, so now that that feature triggers with Warden of Vitality. So it does improve it a little bit. If you don't care about any of that though, uh, just go to six bard levels to get magical secrets and warden of vitality then three road levels then three more bard levels uh, just make sure you go lore bard so that you get the magical secrets at level six and uh, pick up warden of vitality and uh, you'll be healing all over the place best part about this build is that once you pop warden of vitality you can use your bonus actions to pump out a bunch of healing and you still have your main action and your concentration free because it doesn't cost concentration which means you can cast things like haste and keep that up while you're using warden of vitality and healing everybody and then you get to use your action still to do damaging spells stuff like that ton of fun if you guys are enjoying the video please consider liking the video uh, and subscribing to the channel to get all of the other uploads that i uh, that i do about Baldur's gate 3 and many other games uh, and to get notifications about the live streams that i do right here on youtube as well would really appreciate it next up is a simple one and that is pure fighter Le 12 levels in fighter specifically with the battle master subclass however eldritch knight is also fun this one is super simple three attacks per action high strength battle master features are great uh, plenty of feet choices because uh, fighter gets a bunch of feet uh, choices at their, with their levels. Quick note on this one, and that is that I did a build, uh, I did a video about a build where you take one level of war cleric uh, at some point in the leveling process, probably at level 7, uh, and it would give you an extra attack that you can do by burning a war priest charge that, and then you can do an attack with your bonus action, as well as some 
cool spells like Bless and particularly Sanctuary. However, I can't recommend that currently the War Priest feature is broken. Uh, you automatically use it as the, your first melee attack on your turn, burning the War Priest charge, and in turn automatically using up your bonus action, unless you use it for something else before you make a melee attack. This is super annoying, and I'm really surprised when Patch 4 came out that Larian hadn't fixed it. Um, I thought it would be right at the top of the priority list, but maybe in Patch 5. The next two are builds that I haven't done a video on on this channel, and that's because they've kind of just been done to death. Uh, you know, lots of people have made videos about them already, everybody knows about them, and I don't think I would be really adding anything by making a video about them. Uh, although, if you haven't heard of them and you would like me to make a video going into more detail about these builds, let me know, I will oblige. First off is Tempest Cleric 2 Storm Sorcerer 10. Wow, this build is fun. Uh, the name of the game when using this build is using Create and Destroy Water to get all your enemies wet, or getting a teammate to do that if, uh, or getting a teammate to do that if possible. And then just, just launching lightning spells uh, at enemies with maximum damage thanks to the Tempest Cleric feature Destructive Wrath, plus vulnerability thanks to them being wet, plus the ability to do this twice uh, thanks to sorcerers having Quicken Spell, um, along with all the other meta magic options that sorcerers get. You also get heavy armor proficiency thanks to Cleric, although you could start with Sorcerer to get uh, the constitution saving throws if you prefer and then pick the cleric levels up for later. Honorable mention in this spot goes also to just going 12 levels in Sorcerer. Uh, Sorcerer is a fun class to play thanks to meta magic, and it means that pure Sorcerer is the second and final pure class I will be mentioning in this video. And finally, the last build that I wanted to mention is the famous Monk Rogue Multiclass. I know that there are some really funky things you can do uh, with Monk and taking the Tavern Brawler feat, bumping your strength up after you have that and then doing extra damage on your attacks based on your strength modifier that gets added onto the attacks as well. But I'm honestly not too keen on that, it makes you pretty mad multiple ability score dependent. Unless you're drinking elixirs every long rest to increase your strength and kind of concentrating your playstyle on finding those elixirs. And that's not really my cup of tea, I don't really like doing that kind of stuff. Um, plus it kind of just makes the game too easy, <laughs> to be honest. And honestly, I think it gets overshadowed a bunch because all of the builds online are about doing Monk Rogue multiclasses and using Tavern Brawler. But a standard Dex Wisdom based, you know, Monk Rogue multiclass is really good. Basically you take 6 levels in Monk to get the extra attack and then a feat, then 3 levels in Rogue. Uh, to get the Thief multiclass again and getting the second bonus action because monks can do uh, offhand uh, melee attacks with their bonus actions. And then you take three more levels in monk to get more key points so you can do more punches. Specifically the open hand monk is the subclass you want to pick here, however realistically the monk class, you know, if you're not bothered about min-maxing, you the, the other monk subclasses are pretty fun too. Uh, like I said, they get overshadowed quite a lot because Open Hand Monk plus Tavern Brawler plus three levels on Rogue is so incredibly powerful, but you can very easily get through this game on Tactician with a Dex Wisdom based Monk without Tavern Brawler and going with Way of the Four Elements or the Shadow Monk uh, subclass. They are both really good as well. Obviously, Open Hand is the best, but just wanted to mention that they are perfectly viable as well and still just as fun. You'll be throwing so many punches with so many damage modifiers and you get to enjoy the amazing itemization that comes with being a monk. Um, the game has some of the best class specific items for monk um, and you'll be finding them all over the place. I know when I first did my playthrough I was kind of almost getting annoyed that I wasn't a monk because I was finding so many items that are specifically for monks. It's also one of the few classes that I've mentioned in this video that benefits from a really high dex, which uh, it's not really a combat focused you know, thing. But it's a super nice quality of life uh, thing to have when you're actually doing a full playthrough to be really good at stealth and also really good at sleight of hand uh, because it's all I personally like when I was playing with my first playthrough where, which was a paladin and warlock I always had to switch to Asterian and get him to lockpick stuff and then take it from the chest and then move it in from his inventory to my inventory because he didn't have a high strength to carry it all and it was all, all that that inventory management was just so annoying. Um, so, like I said, it's not a huge deal, but for me personally, having a really high dex is just really nice, to be honest. It makes the game feel a lot more fun, because I'm not stuck in the menus the whole time. You could also go 8 monk levels 
uh, and four rogue levels if you want to get the extra feet. Though you miss out on a few things at Monk 9, so I think that's not really worth it. Especially if you're not going Tavern Brawler and you don't need that feat. And that's it. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, ju about just me talking about some builds. Uh, I know that even still, I've been speaking to people uh, in person at work and stuff like that that are still only just picking up Baldur's Gate 3. And so it's kind of, you know, for a lot of people that have been playing it since release, like I have, uh, you might still be getting a little bit burnt out about the build videos and stuff like that, but there's still a lot of good information that can be boiled down and given to people that are still picking up the game. So it's, I think it's still important to make these videos. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, the second episode of my uh, Jack of All Trades Tactician run will be out soon, so I hope you are ready to see that because it's quite a good episode actually. I uh, did some fun stuff in this session, so keep your eyes peeled for that one, subscribe to the channel. And other than that, just have a really nice day. Peace out, everybody.